In this tutorial, we're going to look at painting with shape. The main difference between drawing and painting lies in the manipulation of brush strokes that create interesting shapes. Fundamentals such as shadow, contour, edge control, perspective, design, and many others remain relatively unchanged for either. Yet with painting, we have a wider range of possibilities when it comes to designing internal shapes. Not only can these shapes have different color notes, they can have vastly different forms and values that will add to the believability of the overall artwork. Now, before putting brush to paper, it's always a good idea to have a look at what the old masters have done before us. One of the best examples on this subject is JC Leyendecker. He's the prime example of excellent shape design when painting to convey form, lighting, and pleasing aesthetics. As you can see in these examples, the shapes are very visible. They are all pretty recognizable and above very well designed. Now, your shapes don't have to be as defined as Leyendecker. Many masters chose a subtler approach, but at all times, the shapes dominated their choice of composition, lighting, and internal design. However, what does it mean when we say well-designed? In all honesty, it's a tricky thing to put into a box and define. However, there are some principles that we can follow, as we have been doing in the drawing program, that will help us better understand good design. Firstly, well-designed usually means well-defined. When all our shapes are ambiguous and confusing, everything else becomes ambiguous and confusing by extent, thus losing the overall balance of the picture. Overdefining your shapes in the beginning will drastically help you with your painting application. The second aspect would be visual clarity. As I often say, the difference between art and realism is visual clarity. This pretty much sums up how we want to convey an image to our viewer, through clarity. This doesn't only apply to our composition, perspective, values, and color. Also, well-designed shapes will help us achieve clarity in our paintings. Usually, this means our shapes follow the rules of design, not overly confusing, with a nice balance of big, medium, and small proportions. Another often overlooked form of clarity is that of shadow versus light. I have mentioned shadow mapping many times in the program, as well as in tutorials, so by now you should have a good understanding of what it means. Good shadow mapping means we are also creating a defined shape for the shadows, and by extent the light. This shape shouldn't just be abstractly interesting, it should also properly convey the three-dimensional forms of the subject at hand. That's why a good understanding of drawing is crucial in my opinion since this is where we can truly focus on just that, shadow mapping and form, and not get confused by color and brushwork and everything else. Lastly, a good sense of structure is pivotal for this approach. Although it seems obvious, many beginners tend to venture into painting without this fundamental skill. A good example of structure is the Asaro head. Properly understanding the planes of the head and how they sit in perspective is crucial when we want to paint with well-defined shapes. Since these shapes are usually going to portray a certain plane catching light or sitting in shadow. All right, now let's look at a simple example of this approach. Here I have drawn a simple shape of a nose sitting in a three-quarter view. This simple underdrawing can serve as a base for a further line drawing or painting. At all times, to convey believability, we need to understand the 3D structure of this subject and where our light source is coming from. As you can see in this line art render, I have used cross-hatching to convey my areas of shadow, also known as shadow mapping, and my area of light. Now we can do the exact same with shapes and color. We just need to be more aware of the shapes we are painting to convey form and shadow. Not only do we determine good shapes for our light and shadow sides, the internal planes that make up those shapes 
also benefit from good design. Both for our shadow planes and our light planes, by the way. This is what makes Lion Dicker such an effective painter. And of course, his fellow Golden Age illustrators for that matter. And then oftentimes painters would use this sort of tiling principle as the base of their painting and then start blending shapes to achieve a more realistic look, as you can see here on the right hand side. All right, now let's look at an example that I, or a demonstration that I did specifically for this tutorial. It's gonna be a bust painting um, that I did in sort of a Lion Decker style. And I just wanted to show you guys what I, what I use and walk you through the things that I think about when designing with shapes and thus painting with shapes. Um, it all boils down to the same thing. Whether I'm drawing with um, traditional media or you know brush strokes, copic markers, um, even colored pencil, oils, you know any traditional media or a digital media where I'm just using the lasso tool or I'm using a specific brush, it really doesn't matter. The main thing is that we create nicely designed shapes, right? So going over this time lapse is that I just start with like a very casual, super loose sketch as I would always do. But instead of, you know, refining it more and more with cleaner lines or, you know, even getting rid of this layer and doing a, a proper line on top of that, um, I, I actually stopped the drawing process here as most painters would. It's, um, you'll see this often, even in a, an a la prima painting, is that the painters will still sort of use an abstract kind of drawing to really map in the, the composition of their painting or their subject, and then start painting with shapes, right? So I'm doing the exact same thing here. Um, I'm just, you know, going over form. And again, this is something that has to do with shape language as well. Uh, be sure to look at the classroom session on shape language. Um, this is this is where you actually kind of define what kind of shapes you'll be primarily using. Now for this guy, he's kind of an older gentleman. I wanted to use, I didn't want to make him too evil, but I wanted to give him that eerie vibe. So I'm using a lot of triangles. So as you can see here, um, a lot of triangular shapes in just the main design, just the line art, right? We'll stop it right here for a second. All right, so as you can see, um, this is just the base base design, uh, a lot of triangular shapes. And in terms of color, I'm not doing a lot. I'm keeping it pretty simplistic in like a Zorn palette, um, not too many colors. The main thing that I wanted to show you guys with this example is that how we are going to use shapes um, and form to create our painting. So we're not just randomly using brush strokes. We're going to really, really try and get a good harmony between all planes. And we're going to achieve that by one, creating a good balance between shadow and light make that interesting or as interesting as we can. Um, and then the internal shapes for the shadow side and the light side are also, you know, different planes. And that's why I copied the Asaro head onto this picture. I'm not really referencing it because I, I already know the Asaro head, but I'm just putting it in there for you guys. So you, so you guys can see what I'm actually referencing in my head, because this is all from imagination. I haven't used reference for this um, just because you know, I've drawn numerous of busts and, you know, heads and faces. Um, and I've done the Asaro head. <laughs> I, I, I can't even count how many times I've done that. But so I know the basic planes of the Asaro head. And just using this principle, this very simple principle, I can achieve something that looks not realistic, but it does look believable, right? And that's what, that's what good painting is all about. As I've said, oftentimes, we paint part of what we see, part of what we know, and a lot of what we like to see. Uh, and when you know a lot about lighting, plane changes, and whatnot, then you can start, start designing with more interesting shapes to you know, sell your design a little better. As I said, I'm using triangular shapes, so a lot of my internal designs or shapes that I'm gonna be using to convey a plane change or a color note 
are gonna have a pretty triangular feeling, right? If I were to just copy the planes of the Asaro hat as you see them, I would just end up with an Asaro head, right? And that's not the idea. Uh, the idea is that we're still designers. So we want to design something that is coherent to the overall shape and silhouette that we've established, okay? So again, going further, I'm now blocking in the shadow side, which is basically shadow mapping as we've seen, right? And as you can see, similar to, I'm using the same light source as the Asaro head that you see above. So I'm trying to use as many interesting shapes as I can to create the shadow map, right? Um, and as you can see, as I've just indicated in red, let's stop it here for a second. So I've, I've indicated this in red, and this is a pretty important thing. Um, if, if I were to, so I'm, I'm gonna do that right now. Um, I'm gonna do that in the video at least. Um, as you can see, if I just, if I get rid of everything, the colors, the line work, and just keep that shadow map that I've established, it should already read as a somewhat three-dimensional form and readable uh, in the sense of the design that we've created. It should already read as that character, not in its full detail, but you should get a good sense of what the character might look like just by the, by the hands of my shadow map. If you can do this successfully, then you're really on your way to a good painting because... All right, thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed this clip, make sure you head over to artwatt.com where we have a lot more of this content along with classrooms to accompany each of these assignment cycles, tutorials, a complete beginner's course for you to enjoy and get you up and running with the program. We have an amazing community on Discord where I'm very active. We do online doodle sessions. We do live classrooms that are recorded. We have some great support teachers. So if you wanna get access to all of that, make sure you visit artwatt.com and I will see you there.